All right, for this video, this is going to be a medley of masterful Metroidvanias. All my favorite demos from the Metroidvania Fusion Showcase. So if you don't like double jumping or air dashing, you can stop watching this now. We are kicking things off with Clockwork Ambrosia. This is a shooter Metroidvania, or 2D shooter. It is a steampunk world, and we are just trying to make a living in it. We're going to be fighting slimes, monsters, and lots and lots of steampunk robots. The twist of Clockwork Ambrosia is that you are able to craft all the gear and upgrades that you're going to be using, using the various parts, resources, and items you find in the world. Your gun, or your different guns, are completely moddable based on finding different parts or crafting them. So you can make your gun do a double shot instead of a single shot. You could also make it that it always charges, but it has a slower recharge or always does a charge shot. There are different weapons you can find and craft, and this also extends to your gear as well. You'll be able to craft different clothing, boots, and so on, then add mods to them in order to change their properties, give you armor, make you do other things, etc, etc. The world itself, of course, will be full of secrets, unlocks, alternate passageways, and yes, you will be doing backtracking as well. Now, if I had any legitimate problem from the demo, I don't like the crafting GUI. I would rather it be kind of a list of all craftables and then show you what the resources are required rather than you clicking on the resources and getting what the list of each one is. But from what we played of this one, there is a lot of potential for fans looking for a Metroidvania that's going to be shooting base with a lot of customization. And this was definitely one of my favorites from the event. So if you like your Metroidvanias, but you also want to do a lot of crafting along the way, then definitely check this one out. We go from customization Metroidvania to kind of puzzle platforming with Rat Trap. In this one, we play as an adorable little rat who is trapped in a, looks like a energy bubble in a mysterious laboratory. In order to get out, we must solve a variety of puzzles that involve, well, a lot of jumping and moving around. The twist of this is that you're collecting an actual mech suit, and the mech suit itself is made up of individual parts, including legs, arms, body, and of course, the rat itself. Each part comes with it a different ability. Your legs will gain the ability to do kind of like the super Metroid, like super run ability. Your arms can kind of launch you up in the air. Your gun can, well, shoot and you'll need to separate and combine the different parts in order to solve a variety of puzzles. Your rat is small and can kind of go in like little areas, but you'll need to figure out how to get around, get various upgrades, and do whatever it is that you're going to do to get out of this place and see what else you can find. Now, the only issue that I really had with this one was that the whole kind of super dash felt a little bit awkward to use. They were saying something about how you can kind of get it by running down a decline, but it didn't really quite work for me. And once I got kind of the launch yourself off a wall power, it was far more reliable. Now, from the demo, it is hard to tell if this is going to be more puzzle platforming focus or will there be boss fights and things like that? Because you are fighting enemies, but the main focus from the demo was trying to just getting around and getting the upgrades. Really great game, love the aesthetics, and is another very solid Metroidvania for all of you to check out. And now we turn to the Weird Dream. In this one, we are trapped in a place where everyone has been put into an endless sleep. And in order to get them up, we must brave the Weird Dream, of course, in order to do so. And this will involve a lot of, well, using your chainsaw sword to fight lots of enemies. The demo itself did throw a lot at you at the start, including different abilities. You have different attacks. Your block slash parry 
uses up the meter. That's the thing above your or below your hearts in the upper left. And every time you parry, you also get the opportunity to do kind of like a counter move. You also have a special attack. That is the meter of the chainsaw in the upper left. And this one, at least from what we play in the demo, is looking to be very challenging both in platforming and in combat. The main issue that I have with combat is that while your character can kind of jump around all right, momentum and your general movement is very slow, where it feels noticeably slow compared to some of the other Metroidvanias that we've played. This also made the boss fight of the demo far more annoying than you would think for this kind of gameplay. The platforming will also teach you some very challenging kind of can you dodge and thin that kneel between spikes kind of challenge. So if you're someone who did not enjoy the White Palace of Hollow Knight, you're probably not going to enjoy some of the bonus challenges here. Now, the demo does have a lot of promise, and the game was released almost like a week or two after we played it, which I did not have a chance to look into that one. But there is certainly potential here if you're looking for a more advanced and very challenging take on Metroidvania design. And now we turn to Crypt Custodian. This is our first kind of isometric style Metroidvania. We play a cat who has unfortunately passed on. And unfortunately, instead of going to the happy place full of, I guess, cat heaven, we end up outside. And now we are forced by kind of the ruler of the afterlife to clean up. And to do that, we're going to use a broom and beat up lots and lots of enemies out there. Now, our gameplay here is built on you exploring the world, beating up enemies to collect kind of filth or trash that you can use to then buy upgrades and general stat upgrades or abilities. You'll be able to equip different trinkets, much like some of the other Metroidvanias we've seen, based on completing bonus challenges. And the game is full of a lot of like arena sections and bonus areas you'll have to deal with, including surviving curses that will make the enemies behave in different ways or affect their behavior. But if you can beat it, you'll gain a permanent upgrade. Puzzle solving is going to be kind of the action adventure Zelda affair. We didn't get a chance to see if there's any boss fights or what will be kind of any advanced tech in this. But really well the aesthetics and the art style is very charming here. So this one does feel more combat centric as it's Metroidvania design. So if you're looking for a game that involves a lot of combat and you really enjoy cats, then definitely check it out. And now we turn to a game that is part of the festival but I don't know if it will really classify fully as a Metroidvania. And that is An Amazing Wizard. You play a wizard who has lost their memory and has been trapped in kind of the chaos dimension. In order to get out, we must collect lots of upgrades, beat up enemies in procedurally generated areas, and get loot. So the gameplay here is that you have your different kind of starting abilities and you'll gain access to different spells as you fight enemies and open up treasure chests. You can modify different abilities based on finding items. So you could give your normal attack the property of shooting out lightning. You could give something more firepower, give it additional effect, and so on and so forth, along with finding passive items that will change or upgrade you in various ways. Each area you're going to explore, try to get as many upgrades as you can, and then of course move on to the next. This one again, while it does have some elements of Metroidvania in terms of the upgrades and all that, this is more on the action roguelite side than a full on Metroidvania. But from what we played of this one, it was fairly solid in terms of combat, exploration, and the different abilities. So while you may have come for the Metroidvania games in this video, if you're also looking for an action roguelite, then this one is at least worth a check. And now for something that is more traditional on the Metroidvania side, it is Barbarian Saga the Beastmaster. We play as the last Beastmaster who is trying to save his world from evil. And to do that, we are going to hack slash slash some more in a variety of animal forms along the way. 
The gameplay here is more on the traditional melee focus Metroidvania. You'll look for a variety of upgrades, jump, dash, and avoid all kinds of enemies, and you'll also have the ability to transform into various animal forms. As you unlock new animal forms, they will provide you with different abilities, such as being able to dash, or going into the form to do additional combos and attack styles like that. The main kind of force or crux of combat is that you'll need to get good at the timing for your block slash parry, as this will allow you to kind of knock enemies back and there's this rhythm of kind of parry, hit, parry, hit for a lot of the larger enemies. And the combat did feel a little bit janky in spots. But I like the kind of hand-drawn aesthetic of this one, and there is certainly potential if you're looking for, again, a more traditionally styled Metroidvania. And now for one that is definitely not traditional, we have Voice of Flowers. This one is kind of like if we combine Mario with like a pinch of cave story, if that makes any sense. We play as this girl here, who's trying to save the day, explore the world, collect lots of upgrades, and also jump on lots of enemies and hit blocks. Now, the demo does give you the idea there's going to be a lot more to this one in terms of upgrades and abilities. As you kill enemies, you'll be able to level up and raise your kind of health and magic power. We didn't really get a chance to see how magic really works in this one, as you unlock your first spell after the first boss here. But the game does boast a very wide open world, lots of upgrades, lots of spells, and so on to collect. And there was certainly something very charming about this one from our time in it. So this is one that, if you're looking for kind of a more, I guess like jump-centric Metroidvania, not so much about platforming, but jumping about combat, I would check this one out, and especially if you're looking for one that certainly plays differently from a lot of the other ones we've seen. And now we turn to Soul Devourer, the complete opposite of our last game in terms of tone and styling. We are trapped in a strange nightmare world where students are being kidnapped by demons and monsters. People are transforming into creatures as well, and as any sword swinging a high school girl, we are going to have to go out there, beat the baddies, and figure out what is happening. So this one definitely is more on the traditional combat focus side. You'll collect various souls off of enemies and the environment itself, which will act as both your upgrades as well as your trinkets that you can equip onto your character giving you different abilities, or changing your properties, and so on and so forth. Combat is the name of the game here, and you'll have to use your normal attack as well as kind of your special moves in order to deal with the enemies around. Now, one thing to keep in mind, this one is definitely going for a very, like, edgy, dark aesthetic. Lots of swearing, lots of blood, guts, and gore all around. So if you're not a fan of that stuff, you probably don't want to check this one out. But the combat and the movement here are felt really nice. There's a variety of enemies to go through, and there's a very intriguing story nonetheless. So if you don't mind your Metroidvania on the mature side, and looking for a combat one to get into, then you should give this one a check. And now we turn to one that's a little bit on the different side, and this is Explorers. Hopefully I didn't butcher that too badly. This is, well, obviously a Metroidvania, but the twist here from what we saw in the demo is that instead of you gaining powers and upgrades by beating enemies and finding them in the world, you gain them by spending experience. Enemies will drop varying crystals that you can then take back to your spaceship in order to unlock powers, some that we all know and love, like running and double jump. You'll also find different weapons and spells you can equip to your character as you try to explore this strange alien world looking to get off of it. This one is a harder one to kind of judge. It felt okay to play your character much like with the Weird Dream is 
very slow just to walk around with, and I just started mashing the very slight run in order to kind of get around. I did like the kind of equipment RPG style progression, but this one is definitely on the rougher side than some of the other ones we've covered in this video. Could be something here for fans looking for a more RPG based Metroidvania, but it still is a little bit hard to tell at the moment. And now we go to William and Sly. In this one, this is supposed to be based off of a uh, Flash series, which I have not played. We control a fox, and him and his owner have apparently ended up in some strange valley. And we're just trying to get mushrooms. Unfortunately, there's a mysterious goddess who is going to cause mischief, and we can apparently jump very, very high. This could be the prequel to maybe a Miles the Fox from Sonic. But this one is definitely more on the cozy, low stakes side. Your mission is to, well, hunt down mushrooms. You'll find them by kind of following like a, like a trail or like a smoke above them or like a firefly light. As you collect more mushrooms, more challenges will open up. In order to kind of get past specific obstacles, you'll need to gather essences of different flowers and plants, which can then be turned to like a spell that destroys them. Now, I don't quite know if there is Metroidvania progression in this one, at least from the demo itself. It kind of is, in, at least from what I played, similar to that and Amazing Wizard from earlier that it's kind of like towing the line of whether or not it would be considered a Metroidvania or not. But definitely a very charming game to play. Again, this is not the one you're going to play if you are looking for super difficult, hardcore precision based platforming and combat. But if you do enjoy mushrooms and looking for a game to get, well, lost running around in, then you should at least give this one a check. And now we turn to Orton Was The Case. This one, again, I'm not quite sure if it fits the definitions of a Metroidvania, but it is a very interesting game. This is a kind of action platformer adventure. We play as Orton, and apparently in about an hour or less, the world is coming to the literal end with nuclear destruction. In order to save the day, we are trapped in a time loop. In order to get out of it, we must complete tasks, learn more about what is happening in the world, and try not to get shot, killed, arrested, or anything else along the way. The structure of this one is that each chapter is about you trying to get some kind of information or clue to move the story along. If you fail or you miss the event, you can rewind time as many times as you see fit. And the idea is that each time you rewind, you go back to the start, but you're able to accomplish or do another task to get you more information to then go do something else. It's a very clever idea. Again, there's a definitely a Majora's Mask kind of vibe to this one, but with a great emphasis on kind of the platforming, running, jumping, and all that. This one could be something interesting to play, but again, I'm not quite sure if it fits the Metroidvania vibe. But if you do enjoy time loops and adverting disaster in them, then I would at least give this demo a look. And now we turn to a Scrabadackle. This is an action adventure take on the Metroidvania. As a wizard, we are kicked out of the Wizard Academy when there's an attack, and now we are forced to fend for ourselves in the weird world of Scrabadackle. And in order to do that, we will gather spells, find all kinds of MacGuffins, and pew pew our way around. The gameplay here is built on action adventure style. You'll explore the world looking for different items, upgrades, spells, whatnot, which will allow you to progress further in. You'll have to fight your way through lots and lots of weird enemies as well. The game's gooey here, I really like as it's completely diegetic. You can scry or examine anything in the world, which you can fill up kind of like your lore book, where your character will detail their thoughts on all the strange things that are happening. Now, from the footage, while this does kind of fit the Metroidvania side with a lot of exploration, a lot of upgrades, 
it does kind of go into like a twin stick shooter or shooter base, especially during the boss fights when the pew pewing gets really extreme. In terms of difficulty, I'm not 100% sure where this game is going to settle. If it's going to be more on the harder side with the bullet dodging and bullet patterns, or will there be means of upgrading, boosting your attack, defense, and whatnot that you can use to get around that? But a very charming game, it looks like there's going to be a lot here in terms of exploration and things to do. So if you like your Metroidvania with a bit of magic to them, then definitely check out the demo. And now up is Whirlwind Magician. We play as a girl and talking hat combo. When the girl wanders into the woods in order to learn magic, she stumbles upon a magical hat. And the two become a pair to try and figure out what is happening, save the day, and try to not get into too much trouble along the way. The tech and platforming here is built on flinging your hat. Your hat can be used to do damage, and you'll also gain the ability to teleport to the hat, basically by hitting a button while it's flying. This will allow you to bypass obstacles, get around platforming, and uncover all kinds of secrets and MacGuffins along the way. Now, from what we play to this one, the platforming does feel like it's going to be a little bit more on the advanced side. You see, when you throw your hat, you have to time when to teleport to it. And it's very easy to under or overshoot, especially when you get to character-wide platforms. I don't know if there will be any boss fights or stuff like that, but the platforming felt really good to play. And this one looks like it's going to be another very solid take on Metroidvania design. And I am very curious to see what additional tech will be in the main one. So if you like Metroidvania with kind of dash teleporting around, and looking for a very charming story as well, then you should give this one a check. And we switch from cute and wholesome to very violent for our final Metroidvania of the showcase with Eternal Reckoning. You play an elf trying to take revenge on a necromancer and all of its minions that are trying to cause trouble. And to do that, you are going to be attacking lots and lots of things in this world. Now, the aesthetics in our style feel a little washed out, a little kind of everything is blurring together as you can see with things. Our focus here is on combat, with definitely an emphasis on boss rush or boss fights. Your character starts with a bow, but you can also hurt yourself to fuel your blood magic, which lets you transform into, an, at least in the demo, a werewolf. I don't know if there'll be other forms in the main game. When you hit the enemy with your werewolf attack, it refills your health. So there is this dynamic of getting your werewolf form to then hurt the enemy in order to then get more health back, which you can then use to refill it and so on and so forth. This one definitely has a very interesting charm to it, especially the cutscenes that, well, they're a little bit weird, to say the least. But I was enjoying the gameplay, I'm curious to see where it's going to go in terms of more upgrades, more boss fights, and all that. So if you like your Metroidvania to be more combat-centric with a whole lot of, well, I guess WTF to go with it, then Keep an eye out for this one. And with that, we are done with our Metroidvania showcase. Up next will be the games from the Women-Led Games Festival that happened shortly thereafter. But let me know what some of your favorite games were from the event. And if you'd like me to play your game for a future stream, video, showcase, whatever, please reach out. And with that said, I'm going to rest my legs from all the double jumping we've been doing. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to do the YouTubing stuff people tell you to do. If you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, check out my books wherever they are sold. Visit our Discord and Patreon and come back for detailed discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where you some of the art and science of games.